Hi, this is Mr. Mitchell with another video. This time we're going to talk a little bit about energy formulas and some energy transformations. You may recall that kinetic energy is actual movement that you get, and potential energy is motion that can uh, has the potential to be done. So we actually have some formulas for kinetic energy and a form of potential energy called gravitational potential energy. Let's look on this left side of the screen. You can see it's the kinetic energy formula is one half mass times velocity or speed squared. Now this one is not actually calculated that much, but when you see what's in it, mass in kilograms, velocity, speed in meters per second, then it, these are using units that you have used before. And we have an example below, uh, something that's 55 kilograms going at a speed of 3.8 meters per second multiply or divide by 2, then you get 106, and yes, it is in joules. Just like work, you have energy is in the form of joules. So I think if given these type quantities, I hope that you will be able to find the kinetic energy just by seeing the formula. Now, gravitational potential energy is a very similar thing. You're using things that you've used before, mass, height, and g, which of course is the gravitational constant here on Earth, that's 9.8 meters per second squared. That's why you find gravitational potential energy calculated far more often than any other kind of potential energy because you know what the acceleration is going to be when something is dropped. It's always going to be 9.8 meters per second squared. So just like in the other formula, you have worked with kilograms, which is what the unit is for mass. You have worked with meters, which is what the unit will be for height in this case, and you just multiply them all together. Here's what your answer is, 58.8 joules. So yes, both forms of energy are recorded in joules. But there's an energy conversion you may not have thought much about. Your body. Your body takes in food and it chemically converts that food to where you have energy from the food that you ate. So can we measure the energy done in our bodies? Well, yes, we can. And it involves a term that you are probably familiar with, but might not have realized that it is a term for energy. It is the calorie. All of us consume food. The measurement of energy from what we eat is called the calorie. And one calorie equals about 4,000 joules. So that's a pretty good many joules. And every gram of fat produces about 10,000 calories, which if you have 10 grams of fat, which is what this should say, 10 grams of fat, equals about 40,000 joules of energy. So we really take in a lot of potential energy. But our human body is only about 25% efficient, which is better than a lot of man-made machines, but we end up taking in a lot of calories and we only get out the outtake of what our energy is actually able to burn and use up is only about 25%. So we can measure that, and the term is calorie, one that you're probably familiar with. Now look here, we have the power formula. Yes, we have another unit, but I want to make sure after I talk about the power formula that we are reminded the difference between force and work and our new quantity power. So the power formula is pretty simple. Power equals energy divided by time energy divided by time, and I should have put that up here, but it's power equals energy divided by time. But you can see what we have here. If we have 600 joules over five seconds, that is joules over seconds, and it will be 120 watts. And you may remember that watts is a unit that is used for things like light bulbs. And yes, that is the same watts. So when you see 120 watts on a light bulb, the watts is a measure of power. So what is power? 
You may remember that force is in Newtons. You use force to do work because work is going to be Newtons over a distance. Force over a distance. This woman has force, but she's not doing anything with it in this picture. But here she's doing something with her force. She is doing work. Now work is also, energy is also calculated the same way as work. So energy and work are very similar. It's both measured in joules. So this woman has force. She uses her force to do work. Now where does power come in? Notice that power is including time. So the power this woman is doing while she is working is the amount of work she does in a certain amount of time. So in this photo for work, she's doing work. And if she is doing work over, over any given amount of time, then you divide the joules by the time. So yes, you can have someone who has force, who does work and has a calculatable power pretty much all in the same thing as long as she is in fact doing something. So I'd like for you to know the difference between work, force, and power. I'd like for you to know the units in all three. I'd also like for you to know what a calorie is and how that relates to joules. And I'd like for you to be able to put things in the energy formula for kinetic energy and gravitational potential energy and be able to use those in joules. Well, I hope you've learned a little bit about energy formulas and in about measuring energy. Thank you.